O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and faces and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So uh, community um, is a reason that the center of our worship is Holy Communion. Uh, the great theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, Christianity means communion through Christ and in Christ. Uh, so in our baptism, we're, we were asked, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor by yourself? And we said, I will with God's help. And God knows we need God's help to do that. Um, the important thing for us to realize is that uh, there is a divine economy, I think, and the divine economy is that God sends us people to irritate us in order to uh, change us and to uh, increase our capacity to grow and to see the face of Jesus Christ. And if you don't believe me, believe Thomas Merton. This is what uh, Thomas Merton has to say. He says, as long as we are on earth, the love that unites us will bring us suffering by our very contact with one another because this love is the resetting of a broken bone, of broken bones. Even saints cannot live with saints on this earth without some anguish, without some pain at the differences that come between them. So it's uh, when I find myself irritated with someone, I really want to project that they are the problem. If they would change, I would be happier and the world would be better. But of course, what my better angel says is, here's another opportunity for you to open your heart. Here's another opportunity for you to see Jesus in the face of someone that you don't think can possibly be the face of Jesus. Um, there's a sweet story uh, about uh, St. Peter and Jesus. Um, so uh, Jesus comes to see St. Peter at the pearly gates and he says, you know, Peter, we've talked about this. We've talked about quality control before and you're just letting way too many people into heaven. And you know, we have our standards. And finally, Peter says, it's really not my fault. I stick to the standards, but what happens is people go around to the back door and your mother lets them in. So uh, what we need to remember is the grace of God always opens the door for us wherever we are. And when we get irritated with someone, when we feel as if somehow uh, this person's an impediment for our happiness, the world's happiness, God's uh, reign of peace, justice, and mercy, we have to call and ask ourselves, what part of this person is in me and is the part of myself I don't want to acknowledge? And what can I do in order to make a contact uh, with that person? Um, one of my favorite writers is Joan Chittister. I had the opportunity of meeting her a couple of times and um, she has a wonderful book called In Search of Belief. Um, and it's actually, uh, it's actually sort of a explanation of the creed. So it's a really interesting book, but, but I just wanna read this story if I can do it quickly. She talks about being in the, in the second grade and uh, she comes home from school one day um, and uh, she has an Irish Catholic mother and a Presbyterian uh, stepfather. And so she comes home one day 
uh, quickly. And it's, she says, uh, my mother stood at the kitchen sink, her arms up to elbow and suds, and says to me, well, you're certainly excited, aren't you? What did you learn in school today that has you so wound up? And she says, sister said that only Catholics go to heaven. Oh, really, my mother said. And what do you think about that, Joan? I think sister's wrong. Her mother said, and why do you think sister would say something that's wrong? Because I whispered slowly, sister doesn't know daddy. The way to community is to get, uh, <clears throat> to get a narrower vision. The way to is to be nearsighted. That's what I was stumbling for to see people person by person and to let go of all our categories so that we assume we know who people are. And to remember that um, God is working God's purpose out in us. And if we believe in a Holy Communion, if we believe in the communion of saints, if we believe that God is calling all people into the ministry of reconciliation, we need to begin right where we are. In Paul's uh, letter to the Philippians, he has this wonderful uh, passage where he says, um, so deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Not only do we share the gospel of God, but our own selves. And I would say those two always have to go together. Those two always have to go together because what people want to want to know is, is the gospel of God about relationship or not? And if it's about relationship, it's not just relationship with God, it's relationship with one another. It's relationship with our deepest self. That's what the body of Christ uh, looks like. Uh, Richard Rohr says, um, I like you, I like many of you, am only a disciple of a poor man from Nazareth. He, like the cosmos itself, is about two things, diversity and communion. Diversity and communion. So our calling is always to uh, not just mind the gap, but to bridge the gap. Our calling is to not just come and experience communion with God, but if you, if you experience communion with God and not your neighbor, you haven't experienced communion with God. If you, are, if you are in holy communion, then you're in holy communion with everyone. And uh, we finally have to be as foolish as St. Francis was, uh, to love indiscriminately, and when we come into, a, into some sort of block about that, then to realize that we need to see if we can go deeper. Um, Anne Lamont, my, my wife also always says that um, when I get completely senile, the only thing I'm gonna remember is all these quotes. I won't, I won't know my name at all, but I'll just spout out quotes. You know, Who are you? Let me give you a quote from Anne Lamont. So, uh, Anne Lamont says, uh, isn't it convenient that God loves the same people we do? Um, and so uh, what I would say is, um, in order to think about community and communion, um, it doesn't really matter which way we begin because all roads connect with one another. So uh, probably in the world of COVID, the easiest place to begin because we're all we're all enclosed in our little boxes is to cultivate an awareness of God's love for you um, to witness uh, the abounding grace that God is uh, has showered show, showered is showering and will shower on you uh, because it's if you enter into uh, a deep sense of thanksgiving, 
it's really hard to be, uh, to carry animosity towards another person. Um, so I think that's the first thing. The, this, but the second thing to say is to take seriously, again, as St. Francis, to take seriously that the face of Jesus is in the person uh, that you encounter and often is in the person you least likely encounter. Um, there's a wonderful story of, uh, I may have told you this, so just pretend I haven't because we're all Southerners and we're polite. So uh, there's a wonderful story of, uh, of uh, Jesus is in the upper room and uh, Judas is in hell. And uh, Judas wakes up and he, in the high, very distance, he sees a, a small little light and he be, begins climbing, climbing and climbing his way up through the earth until he finally comes into a small upper room in Jerusalem. And Jesus turns to him and says, Judas, we've been waiting for you because we couldn't start our time together without you. Now take that story and apply it to the political divisions we have today. Um, how is it that our two different polar uh, political parties can recognize that our call is to be wholeness, is to be whole. Our call is to be the United States. Our call is to witness what we have in common and then build from there. And, and, and what we can do is not just sort of point to our politicians and say, I wish those people would behave. That's not very helpful for anyone. What we can do is believe that once something happens anywhere, it begins to happen everywhere. And so if we want our, our political parties to become uh, at least more polite to each other, if not to work to e with each other, then what we need to do is to mirror that behavior where we are and to take a sense of agency where we are and to believe that that has a ripple effect. Um, you know, I mean, just think about it. The saints really, you know, it's not exactly like they had the internet. Uh, I mean, Francis was sort of in the middle of nowhere in Italy and he changed the world. Uh, you know, uh, so our agency is that if we do, if we are able to sort of hit middle C, uh, it will have a vibration across the world. Um, I believe that. I believe that, that, uh, I believe that 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 the that goodness always, as Thoreau says, leavens the whole lump, um, and I and I believe that that it doesn't do me any good to read the New York Times or the Washington Post, although I do every day, uh, and feel morally superior to all those people that are messing up the world. It's not helpful for anyone. What I need to do is to. Uh, pray for our country and to, and to ask God to give me agency to do something about that exactly where I am, uh, regardless, of, regardless of COVID, regardless of the snow, regardless of, of anything. Um, and as I, I think I told you this before, uh, the first way to begin that is to pray. Um, so I have in my, I think I've said this before, I have, uh, I have in my uh, prayer book, I have this list that, that keeps getting longer. I, I pray for my family and my friends. I pray for people who have asked me to pray for them. And I pray for people that drive me crazy. Um, and when I pray for the people to drive me crazy, what I'm praying is, Dear God, help me see the face of Jesus in this person. I'm not praying, dear God, make them change so I will like them. It's, it's, it's about me. Open my capacity. Right? So um, 
I'll tell you a, a quick story and then a little longer story. Uh, the quick story is a friend of mine moved here um, and we have known each other forever. Um, uh, but he moved here and, and he had uh, trouble finding a community. He's uh, retired and uh, kind of an introvert and moved way out in the country. Um, and he finally had lunch with me and he said, you know, you're the only person I know. And I don't know how to build a community. And um, it's not like I deserve the Nobel Peace Prize, but I said, you know, this isn't, Bruce, this really isn't rocket science. So I picked up the phone and called four other men and we started a men's group that meet once a month. Um, and it's become a great community for me. It's, it's helped Bruce, but it's become a great community for me. So all that's to say is that, that uh, we can create communities. Um, the other story I'll tell you is, is a little harder and uh, I'm less, I'm, I'm hardly the hero in this one. Um, we, um, I've never quite known why we do this, but you know, we call the uh, collection of bishops, the house of bishops and the collection of deputies, a house of deputies. I remember when I first got elected the bishop, people said to me, welcome to the house. And I was like, I already have a house. I don't, I feel welcome where I am, you know. Uh, I had no idea what that was about. Um, but what happens is you get uh, in small groups and um, I get along mainly with, with almost, with a lot of folks. There are not many people I can't get along with. Um, but there was one bishop that just, we were just like, uh, I don't know, we just rubbed each other wrong from the moment we met each other. Um, and um, and I, I took that, uh, I don't know how to put this. I sort of uh, got to a place of ingratitude because the more that this person succeeded, the more I felt like life was unfair. Um, the better his life was, the more I begrudged that. And I was like, this is not a nice person. I don't understand why he's getting so far ahead and I'm not. Um, and it, so, I, so that, that he became a, a sort of measuring rod for me. And he became a way that I projected everything that I was disappointed about. So if I got into a tangle with a standing committee about some issue, somehow I would go, well, I bet that other bishop doesn't have this problem. And why doesn't he have this problem if I have this problem, right? Uh, and, and this, honestly, uh, this went on for years. Um, and in God's economy, um, what happened is we ended up in a small group so that every house of bishops we had to meet together. And, and finally, I was like, I get it, God. Like, this is not about this person. This is about part of my heart is frozen. And what can I do about that? And so uh, I finally uh, it, I finally initiated, which wasn't hard. It's not like a heroic thing. I just sat next to him at lunch periodically at the House of Bishops and started asking about his family and started asking about, tell me about what sports you like and what books you, in other words, I was saying, I've got to, I've got to go deeper to connect with this person because it's not about him, it's all about me. And honestly, it took about a year. It took about a year until finally I felt my heart sort of thawing out. And when I would get, and I would intentionally go sit with him at the House of Bishops um, because, because honestly, I felt like, how can I preach all this good news and be such a jerk about this person? 
Uh, my point about this is that um, when we feel when we feel out of communion with people, we have a degree of agency if we will claim it. And we must be intentional about trying to bridge that gap. Um, because what we realize is they are not the ones that are suffering from this, right? We are the ones that are suffering because we are not being able to witness God's reign of peace, justice, and mercy. Just last thing. Uh, if we read Dante, which would be a great thing to do in the, in, uh, the world of COVID, what we need to remember is that heaven is where everyone is together and the only thing they do is sing God's praises all day long. That's, that's what heaven is, is to constantly say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so if we want to experience heaven here, if we want to eat the bread of heaven and get it inside us, we must begin to practice that. And we must practice that with the person we least want to. Because if we don't, God will send 10 more people just like them and say, do you want to practice it now? Do you want to practice it now? Do you want to practice it now? And the very last thing I'll say is, this is the gift we can give to our country because we need to become the United States again, again.